Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, great millionaires are not merely made by hard work and determination alone. Sometimes the catalyst may be something that happened merely by accident. Now, if you look at the birth of Polaroid instant cameras, if you can remember those, the man who invented those cameras was prompted to come up with the idea by the voice of an impatient child who wanted to know when he could see his photograph. Such an epiphany came the way of this week's guest, Charles de Toy. He couldn't find a suitable premises for his pest control business back in 1996, so he built his own. It led to a property management and development business that made him a fortune. Here is how he did it. It all began in 1996 when Charles de Toy couldn't find a suitable premise for his franchise pest control business. The only option was to build his own. And to his surprise, he realized he could build more efficiently and cost effectively than the industry norm. You know, the easy part is actually building the building. But a building on its own has no value. Um, it's the finding of the right tenant and then building a long-term relationship with that tenant. With over 120 tenants who vary from a one-man operation to companies that take up to 3,000 square meters of office space, the Success Academy has no plans of stopping here. At the moment, the company holds a portfolio of 50,000 square meters of office space in Highfelt Techno Park Centurion. This will increase to 75,000 square meters in the next three years, with the additional office park that is currently under construction. I only focus here in Highfelt Techno Park. Um, I also only focus on building uh, office accommodation. So I don't do factories or houses. Uh, we just focus purely on providing A-grade office space. But Charles is no ordinary landlord. He believes that in order for a business to grow, he needs to get involved with his tenants and help them grow their business. Our success comes from the fact that, that we um, really look after our tenants. Um, we, make, we make it as easy as possible for them to succeed in their businesses. So we create an environment where you know, where they can uh, really reach their full potential. Now here in the studio with me is the man himself, Charles de Toy, the CEO of the Success Academy. So Charles, now you were born in South Africa, but That's you right, moved at a very early age to Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, right. and uh, you grew up there. Just tell us a little bit about what it was like for you growing up there. Um, my parents got divorced when I was 18 months old, and uh, my dad took me uh, to what was Rhodesia back then, uh, to my aunt, and I grew up on a farm. And um, really, that was a, a child's dream to grow up on the farm. Um, I actually did my schooling in uh, Rhodesia, and uh, when I did my finish with my matric, um, my dad just said to me, Charles, you need to go and get a job. Uh, there was nothing about university. In fact, I don't think my family had even found out that there was such a place as a university. Um, certainly, didn't we didn't have the money to even think about that. So I went for my first interview and uh, I didn't know what it was for. Uh, it turned out that they were looking for an operator. When I got to the interview, it turned out that they were looking for a pest control operator. Uh, I was so proud of myself because I actually got the job. And uh, my first interview, imagine that, you know, uh, got the job, very proud. Um, and then six months later, I found out that uh, the only reason why I got the job was I was the only applicant. And uh, <laughs> over the years, I've learned to live with that. But uh, I must tell you also that um, all my friends used to laugh at me because, uh, you know, being the bug man, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know uh, it was really, they, they all laughed at me. But, uh, but I, I, I stayed with the company. It was a company called Fumigation Services. And after 10 years, I, I was a co-owner of the company. Um, and there were some interesting times being a pest control operator. It must have been. I mean, you're probably one of the few um, multi-millionaires we have on this program. You've been attacked by bees and bugs and everything else you can think of. <laughs> Just tell us how difficult it was in those early days. Well, you know what? I'll never forget on one occasion, there was a swarm of bees high up in a tree. And um, one of my assistants, he went up first with, with a gas bottle. And when he got uh, to the top, he dropped the gas bottle. So the second assistant went up with the, big, with the gas bottle, and he also dropped it. So I went after him. We were all high up in the tree, and by this time, the bees were really angry, and they started uh, stinging us. 
and so the top operator fell out the tree on top of the next guy and both of them fell on me. So that was just me one of many, many cases where, um, you know, where, where I landed up in hospital as a result of being stung by bees. So being a pest control operator is, is not exactly... Glamorous, you know, shall we not say. A, it's no. not a glamorous no. job because you've got to crawl under the roofs, under floors, into the roofs of buildings and um, get into some really dirty... You know, you really get yourself dirty. Now, these were the heady days when mm. uh, Zimbabwe was coming up to independence. There was a civil war going on. And uh, you, at the time, were in trouble to an extent with the authorities. You probably were also one of the few uh, multimillionaires on this program who spent six months in prison for being a conscientious objector. Just tell us a bit about how it came <laughs> about. That's quite right, Chris. I, uh, towards the end of the 70s, in fact, it was in 79, um, the authorities eventually caught up with me because um, you know, we'd be been going through the bush war and I was a conscientious objector. And um, I, I always say that under Ian Smith's government, uh, I was imprisoned uh, for six months for refusing to, to take up arms. And I spent six months um, in the prison in Gueru. Uh, the problem is that everybody else in the prison were actually criminals and uh, we were all treated the same. Uh, it was not a very pleasant experience, I must tell you. And while I was in, while I was in prison, they came with the next set of caller papers, which was for the day that I was coming out of prison. And the system there worked: first call up that you refused to go to, you'd go six months. The next one would be twelve months. So I literally fled the country in 1979. Fortunately, I I was born here. I had a South African passport. I came through the border in January of uh, 1980. The police had been following me for about two weeks before that because there were a few things I needed to sort out, but they were after me. But uh, fortunately for me, on, on the 1st of January, they took the day off, I think, and I came through the border. I was so scared going through that border because I was convinced that they were going to uh, arrest me and put me back in prison. Not only that at that time, amongst your peers, you must have been shunned and branded very for your much stance. So, very what much happened? so. Uh, it was the cowardly thing to do, you know. And um, in hindsight now, one can see how pointless it all was. Um, and uh, it wasn't the kind of thing that, that I admitted to people for many, many years. It was, uh, you know, I was ashamed in the family even, you know, that... Uh, I, I was a coward. Um, looking back now, and I, many of my friends were killed in that war, maimed for life, and, and even psychologically damaged to this day where um, they're not the people that they, that they used, to, used to be. Um, so I came to South Africa. Um, the land of your birth? Yeah, it was the land of my birth, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I don't know where I would have landed up if I, if I hadn't had my... South African passport. Um, and I must share this with you that I left a very good business in, um, in Rhodesia, what is now Zimbabwe. Mm. Had to start all over again um, in, in the early 80s. The first two years I found exceptionally difficult. Um, it was a new country to me, new situation. Um, but I started a, a pest control company and my dad and my brother-in-law came in as partners. The company is called uh, Pest Control Specialists. And um, the company did exceptionally well. I was fortunate because, uh, you know, I'd had 10 years in the industry and I knew how to, you know, what worked and what didn't work. Um, but I uh, came to a new country with new sets of laws and um, everything was, it was just difficult, you know. I came with a thousand what was then a thousand dollars, which was the equivalent <laughs> of a thousand rand. Yeah, sure. That's literally what I came into the country with. Um, my, my first month's rent was something like nine hundred or nine hundred rand. So, really. Um, so those early days were very difficult. And then we came to your epiphany, mm -hmm. 1996. Right. You wanted a new building for your business, couldn't find one, so you decided to build your own. Was it as simple as that? Uh, not quite. <laughs> Chris. Uh, it sounds quite simple now, but I mean. I bought a piece of ground and we, we had plans drawn up, went out to tender and I, and I looked at the prices, I thought, no, you know, I can do this cheaper. And um, I had built the odd house before in my, in, in my past, so 
I got together a team of people and uh, the building was about 700 square meters and uh, it took me a whole year to build the building. So you were in there too with your tools? Well, not quite. well to a certain extent. <laughs> <laughs> I was running a business as well, you know. Um, and uh, when I finished building the, the, you know, the offices and we moved in, I thought to myself, oh, you know, this, this could be quite a nice hobby because I'd got together a group of people, the uh, subcontractors who were very good. Um, that's most probably one of my greatest strengths that I have. I have the ability to, to um, work with people and to get the best out of them. So I decided, well, you know, this is a good hobby. So I bought the property next door and uh, that's how it all started, you know. Each year the projects just got bigger and bigger. Um, to date, in the last, I'd say, um, 17 years now, I've built over 100 buildings in Highfield Technopark in Centurion. Uh, my portfolio currently is about 55,000 uh, square meters of office space. And um, we have about 120 uh, corporate tenants. And uh, we're busy, you know, with our latest project of about 40 buildings, which will take about a year, uh, four years. I now take a month to finish a building <laughs> of 700 <laughs> square meters, whereas my first one took me a year. <laughs> so I've learned a little bit in the process. And the pest business, what happened to that? You know what, Chris, about, about uh, 10 years ago now, I decided that the hobby had got bigger than my, you know, the franchise business. Because from 1990, when we franchised the business, and, and this is a, a very interesting factor that, you know, it doesn't matter what business you're involved in. The moment you franchise that business, you are no longer in that business. You're now in the franchise business. And it's a totally new business. You've got to learn, you know, franchising sounds very simple. You, you find a winning recipe, and then you simplify it, and then you duplicate it. Um, and that's what franchising is. And it's quite interesting that, I mean, I, I sold my franchise business to a couple of my franchisees that had been with me for a long time. They paid me off over f a five-year period. I must tell you, I was very impressed because they actually paid me off. Oh. At, w w you know, at first I thought, <laughs> I wonder if they're going to last five years. But they've actually taken the business to new heights and they're still doing very well. Well, hold that thought there, Shaul. Um, we're going to talk a lot more in the second half about the property game, but also your particular love for trees, which I know is something that you, you want to talk about a lot. It's time for a short ad break. We'll see you right after this. <laughs> 